Hey guys, I'm SJ. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're brand new, my name's SJ. I'm a mum of three, and I make a few videos here on YouTube all around kind of positive parenting, gentle parenting, positive discipline, and just something that I'm really getting interested in. I've got three kids, and I, I need to know this type of stuff because I feel like I'm challenged all the time, it's not because I'm nailing it. Um, so I was reading a lot recently about positive things we can say to our children that really help to um, encourage that connection with them and that go beyond just kind of like, you know, the stuff we say all the time, like I love you, good job, um, you know, and all that kind of stuff, which is sometimes goes in one ear out the other with children. And these were all written by like um, different people, I sort of cherry picked the ones that I found the most kind of interesting and that sort of sparked something in me that I think will help go further and like create good connections with your kids and speak to them in their language and how kids understand love not kind of adults because it's just so different for them isn't it so number one is can I play with you and I just really love this I was reading an article and it was saying about how for our children that is just such the best thing they can hear from their mum or dad. Often they're asking us, mum, can I play with you? Can I play with you? And we're like, in a minute, in a minute, because we're such busy people. And it's saying, I want to be with you. You're my priority right now. And without it just sort of happening, making that statement and asking. And it also teaches them good habits for when they are out with their friends to say, oh, can I play with you? So it's a really lovely one, I thought. This, I think, is my absolute favourite. And it is, you deserve it. And I've started using this and I just literally love it so much because you know like you're running your kid a bath and it's bath time and they're just being like it's bath time being like oh I've got you a hot bath because you deserve it. And you know when everyone says that to you just like I do deserve it. Tell them their birth story. So this is a different type of one, it's not that you're sort of afraid you're doing but whenever a child hears their own birth story it fascinates them. They will be totally captured and enthralled and you can guarantee that after they've listened to that story they are going to want to spend that time with you, they're going to want to reconnect with you because it takes them right back to when they felt most loved and cherished and wanted and maybe they've forgotten that about you, you know you're battling over homework and the homework's done and you're sort of not feeling like great about each other. It's like oh I remember like when you you came home from hospital for the first time and their eyes will be on stalks and I can guarantee you that straight afterwards they will regress a little bit and go back into that little cozy little kid that wants to cuddle and be looked after and sometimes that's the best way to start that like, reconnection again so let me know does that always work for you you can say no and I think this is a really important one that I am trying to learn because I'm trying not to be think of myself as a parent who is in control all the time and that my children are something that I have to control, like I have to lead and I have to set boundaries and I have to set them loving limits, which is the phrase, loving limits, but I do love it. Um, and yeah, you can say no is important. So when I'm having dinner battles with them, sometimes I say, it's okay, you can say no. You can say no, you're not gonna eat this. The problem is, then you're gonna be hungry, or the problem is you're not gonna get dessert, or the problem is you still have to sit at the table while everyone else eats, uh, which is one of our rules that we have. But just a child hearing from their parents, you can say no, um, is an important life skill for them to have and a life lesson for them to have, and it's a good one to think about, and it gets you out of a battle sometimes as well. It gets you out of that. They're about to butt heads, they're trying to butt heads with you. You can say no. And it's respecting them, it's respectful parenting. That's so interesting. Obviously, children just want to be heard that, that they're interesting and that we care about the stuff that they care about. And it's just that leaning in again into their interests and their hobbies. And mummy's here. I have to say mummy's here a lot, especially at night if they're worried at all. And it's something that I remember so clearly from my childhood of being in bed and I was always an anxious sleeper, like I would get worried at night, and my mum just used to sit next to my bed just saying or repeat, mummy's here, mummy's here, mummy's here. The one I loved, I read on a blog post, and it was this woman, she was writing that her dad had a little song, and I didn't know how the song went, but the phrase was, whoops, you made a mistake, and you're still perfect to me, and I guess he had a little way of singing it, and she just said that whenever in her adult life she makes a mistake, um, she always has that go through her head, the first thing, so no matter what she's facing, that she knows she blames herself for or whatever, she can be like, whoops, you've made a mistake, but you're still perfect to me. And I think mistakes can be forgiven is one of the biggest things that I've read about in positive discipline that's really sort of made me think, yeah, that's so important. Like, how long do we drag on sometimes a punishment? Um, as long as it's just a mistake. So I loved that one. What would you do? So asking your child for 
their opinion. And I was reading this article that said it's so lovely for children to see an adult pivot in their decision making because of what they have said. And it helps them to really value themselves and have courage in their own convictions. So it could just be you make up a problem like, oh, I'm not too sure whether I'm going to be able to get the car out of the driveway and go there or if we should go on our bikes or what would you do? And then whatever they say, go, oh yeah, I was going to go on the bike, but you know, you're right, let's get the car out. I think I can do it, whatever. That's such a stupid example. But a child seeing that you have thought we were going to do one thing, they gave you their opinion and you did the theirs, you followed their point of view is so important. And the children, my children are learning about their rights at school at the moment. And one of the things is we have a right to be listened to by adults. And I think that as much as we do that, then the next time you're in a conflict situation, they don't feel like, my mum just dismisses me, she never listens to me. It's like, they will start to feel that you are an adult who listens and who cares and takes their opinions on board. And you do, I'm sure you do. Um, but it's just a good way of doing it. That's great, can we make it even better? So I love this one about teaching your children self-improvement. So when they've done something and they're like, I've done it, you know, done my homework, I'm ready to go off, you're gonna go, that's great. And slipping in this, can we make it even better? Or can we make it your best? And then teaching them that whenever they've done something that they're really proud of, there's always some improvement they can do to make it their best. And it's a lovely, gentle way of kind of keeping pushing them and raising their expectations of themselves. And it's something I used to work in advertising. We always put an ad idea up on the wall and then we would do, how can we make it better? how can we make it better? And we would just like fill up the room like that, trying to make little improvements. And it's a fun thing to do with kids' homework or anything like that and showing them that there's always better, there's always room for more, there's always extra work you can do sometimes. Um, and I thought it was a really interesting one. And the last one is, it's fun to play alone. And I think this is so important, especially when your children are going off into school. My children always told me that they played alone. And my first reaction was like, Ugh. they would say, nobody played with me. And I would be like, what can we do about this? I need to march into the school. I need to do all these play dates. And then I said, I just turned it into a positive. And I was like, it is so much fun to play alone. I absolutely love playing by myself. And it teaches them that you know, if you love your own company and you're happy being alone and with your own self, that is the life lesson that's gonna spin any time they feel lonely or sad. Hopefully it will give them that positive voice back in their head, in your voice saying, it's fun to play alone it's fun to be alone. Um, so I thought that was a lovely one as well. So I hope you enjoyed those positive things to say to your kids. And um, they were a mishmash from all over, but I thought I would just share them all and then everyone can take what they want from them because we're all individuals, our children are all individuals. Um, and I just loved all of them. And it's not something we're gonna repeat every single day, but maybe pick one once a week, maybe stick them up in your fridge, maybe write a couple down somewhere in your notebook and just try and use them. Like I'm using the You Deserve This so much more because my children are feeling a bit anxious at the moment about going back to school. So yeah, cherry pick and I would love to know what you think of them. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you want more positive parenting videos. I've got a Love Languages one still coming up. I'm researching it so much and that'll be up soon and I would love to have you here on my channel and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.